So here is a solution we came up with in class for parts A, B, and C to the, the thing problem. And they're pretty straightforward. Uh, we create a new object called snack for part A. For part B, we create a new object called fave food, and we print it out using the print message method, which is inside a thing. There it is down there, and it's very, very simple. It just goes and gets the, the name, uh, which is available as an instance variable inside of uh, the objects or inside of this class. So each object has its own name, of course, that's assigned when you instantiate the object. We decided there was three steps. We're going to find the length of the string, which is, uh, it takes two lines down here, actually. We could probably compact that into one line, though. Let's see. Okay, well, sorry. This first line goes and retrieves the name of the string, or the actual string value, which we, we're, we're going to need. And that uses uh, something.getName, which is one of the methods inside of the thing class. So. Uh, there's get name, which returns the name. So let's go back in here. So we need that line, but this line here, in uh, s length equals the name dot length. Okay, so what we could do here is copy this times s length and just replace that here. And let's comment this out and see if this works. It would just simplify things a little bit. Always good to do that if possible. Which is great. Okay, I didn't uncomment this. Let's just make sure it's working. We'll save again and run it. Okay, good. So we can get, let's just remove that line. There's no sense having that if we can simplify things. And I'm going to remove all this, the description. It's good to have comments for sure, but we don't really need them in this case. We've solved that uh, particular problem. Okay, so what's next? Well, what if we wanted to uh, tidy this up a bit so that our main doesn't actually have what looks like a method. This kind of looks like a method. It's, you know, some lines of code in sort of an algorithm type format. And, 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 and so what it makes sense to do is to move this oh, out of the main. And there's actually two ways to do this. The first one's, well, it's kind of an ugly way to do it, but let's talk about this. This is more sort of a procedural programming approach. And what we could do is place it down here. Now, we're going to have to set this up a little bit better. It's going to be a static method. It's going to return a string, and we can call it uh, rename or something like that. I don't know. And then we've got to put our brackets in. And a bracket here as well, too. We're also going to have to add parameters to this. We're going to send in the name. So let's just, for simplicity's sake, we'll call it the name. We're going to look at how this works when you use the same variable name inside of a method. Uh, we'll, we'll see that in later chapters. It, it does work. It's probably not the best idea, but it does work. And it simplify things for now down here. So instead of this line, what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a call to this uh, method. And we'll do something like this. String new name equals rename. And we've got to send in something dot get name. Okay, hopefully that works. <laughs> we need a return statement down here. Return the name. Probably forgetting a few things. We'll see if we get any errors now. Yeah, we got a couple errors. Okay, so let's just move this over so we've got some more room. Can I find simple string new name equals uh, something? Get name. Okay, line 11 looks like I spelled it wrong. That would do it. 16, variable th the name is already defined. Oh, we don't need this line at all because we're sending in the name. So we can remove this line entirely. There, there we go. It should still work because we've got the name being sent in as an argument. Okay, line 18. Cannot find symbol. Line 18. Seven dot seven. Oh, yeah, we don't need to do that in here. We can just return it. This should probably happen somewhere else. Okay, let's just see now if we're getting close. Okay, pizza's great. <laughs> Now let's run something dot print message and see if this is working. Now 
if we run that, it's working great. However, now what we want to do is update the name. And so when we return new name, we're not actually doing anything with it. So what we need to do is use the, uh, the method for renaming, which is set name. So we'll go back here and we're going to put a line here and we'll say something dot set name, new name. So what this is going to do is it's going to run the method down here, rename. Okay, it's going to run rename. It's going to send in uh, something dot get name, which is going to be ABCD. It's going to assign that to new name. And then um, the output, that is, which is going to be where it actually removes one of the letters. And then what we're finally going to do is, is resend, not resend, but we're going to send that new name in and that will update the name. So let's just see if this is working. Yeah, there we go. And each time we run this, we're, you know, there's only four letters, so we might see the same one a few times, but it should be different ABD. Yeah, there we go. Now, this is still not the best way to go. In fact, this is a terrible way to go. I'm going to cut this out uh, because we don't want to convolute our main. This, is, this would be more like procedural programming where we've got a bunch of procedures, we're making calls, and, and things can get ugly fast. You just have to trust me on that. I don't really have time to go into the details, but just imagine all the different variables if we had more complex objects. Now, of course, we probably wouldn't be using objects if we're doing procedural programming, but the fact that we've got objects, let's just stick with that concept. And I'm going to go back here now, and we're going to add a new method. It's going to be this one, and it's going to be rename. Whoops. And we're going to put it inside here. Now, that might not just work. We're going to have to change a few things out here. So string new name equals something dot get name. What we can actually do here is remove this line and this line, and we can go something dot rename. And let's see if we get lucky here. Wouldn't that be nice? Okay, so we've got something wrong here. Can't find single something dot rename. Jab 11. Oh, I spelled it wrong yet again. Okay, save, run again. All right. Uh, method rename and class thing cannot be... Ah, yes. Okay, so we've got a couple problems here, probably. First of all, it's not static. It is going to return a string. Actually, it doesn't even need to return. It doesn't need to return one. This, this is going to be void. And we're going to get rid of this. In fact, we can actually ac access that instance variable directly and just say name equals the name. Okay, let's just save that and it'll keep it simple for now. Oh, it doesn't like something else. Method rename in class thing cannot be applied to given types. Something dot rename. Required string found no arguments. Ah, yes, we don't need arguments because we're using the instance variables. So we can remove that argument. Oh, we got lots of problems here. Okay, thing Java 27 cannot find symbol. Int random equals int math.random, the name.length. So here we got to change this to name. And this should be name. And this should be name. Name equals the name. And this is going to, we're going to have to, uh, there we go initialize the name as well. Let's try that. Oh, and it works. So this is a much, much better solution because what we're doing is we're, we're creating a method inside of the thing class, which makes sense. What we want to do is change the values here. Uh, and so we definitely would want to pull that out of any code that we can, pull that out of main and, and, and simply create uh, a new method. Hopefully that helps to, uh, to illustrate some, some different possible solutions to part C for this question. Okay, that's it. Over and out.